Hi, this is Everett Crockett. Welcome to TRS, your retirement in focus. Members and friends, although the calendar has turned and this is our first podcast of 2024, the mission of the podcast remains the same, to empower and educate our members and our listeners on their journey to retirement. And as we continue to help you navigate your retirement journey, we have another outstanding guest in studio with us today. Joining us is Yaracel Colbert, an agency consultant of the Horace Mann Companies. The Horace Mann Companies provide individual and group insurance and financial solutions for educators and others who serve the community. They are the largest financial services company, and they are serving the community to help those members achieve lifelong financial success. Yaracel is highly dedicated and results driven. She has over 27 years of experience accentuating the educational, financial literacy, and entrepreneurism landscapes. She is also the author of the From Red to Black Weekly Financial Journal, a scripture-based 52-week journal helping people with their financial goals. And that is exactly what we want her to do, help us with our financial goals. So let's welcome Yaracel Colbert, agency consultant with the Horace Mann Companies. Yaracel, welcome to our studio, and thank you so much for stopping by today. Thank you so much. How are you, by the way? I'm, I'm wonderful. It's just really great to be here. I'm grateful. I'm very humbled to be a guest uh, on this podcast. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to be here. And Excellent. Happy New Year. I was about to say, <laughs> Happy New Year to you as well. How's your New Year been so far, thus far? It's been going. <laughs> it has really been on go. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'll say um, January 2nd, the pedal to the metal has been in full force. Already. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Understood. So it's going to be a great year. I'm excited about it. Excellent. Glad to hear. So let's. Uh, I'm always excited when we have guests to share empowering information with our members. So let's jump right into these questions for today. Yaracel, introduce yourself to our audience and tell us a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. Sure. Thank you for that introduction. It's so strange sometimes when you hear someone talk about you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, that is me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I'm a mom. Mm -hmm. I have three sons, oh, wow. Jeremiah, Gabriel, and Solomon. Awesome names, by the yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I am an educator at heart. Mm -hmm. I went to college for education, East Tennessee State University. I'm a graduate of the Clemmer College of Education. Mm -hmm. Left there, taught school for 12 years, all in DeKalb County here in Georgia. Okay. Uh, and then um, I left, became a program director for a youth program. I did that for seven years mm -hmm. and uh, worked for the DeKalb County government um, as a project manager in their youth services department. Okay. So that was exciting. And that took me to the Horace Mann Companies Understood. Uh, in 2017. So it's been quite a journey. And I've done some things in between there, wrote, wrote a journal. Mm -hmm. Done some speaking events, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Understood. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So, Yaracel, can you give us some insight about your own financial journey and some of the lessons you learned along the way? So, <laughs> I would say that my first financial coach unofficially was my mom. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom, um, Southern woman uh, from the outskirts of Charleston, South Carolina, you know, no big time formal education, yeah. but she had that wisdom. Mm -hmm. You know, she would say things to us like, you can't have champagne taste with a beer pocket. <laughs> you know, she would say things like I would ask for certain things and she would say, what is your name? Are you a Rockefeller? And so you cl oh, <laughs> you wow. clearly knew and you understood that she really was teaching us you live below your means. Mm -hmm. You don't overspend. You know, she was teaching me those basic financial budget things. Yes. Um, and then we lived pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were not rich. We were not really super wealthy. Mm -hmm. But I learned after I began to I got exposed mm -hmm. and I saw a whole different side. And I'm thinking my mom works hard. She is doing everything. She served in the military 27 years. Mm. So when you see someone who is a good steward like her and uh -huh. then you see a person living a different life, you want to know what what are the differences? Mm -hmm. What did they do that put them in that place? Wow. Um, and so I just started to read mm. and try to learn more about about money and why money was doing what it was doing. 
even evaluating myself, why did I think about money the way that I thought about money? Uh-huh. And I realized after college that in order to really be a good financial steward, you you had to have the right mindset. You had to be disciplined. Mm-hmm. Um, you had to practice and you mm-hmm. had to learn. Yes. So that's how my financial journey started. It started with mom. That's a great way for it to start. And, and as I look back, even over my life and and the time I spent with my parents coming up, we never did anything like that growing up. Mm-hmm. And so as a parent, I tried to do a little bit better. But that's something yeah. I think as a country or just people in general, we need to do a better job of that, not only in the home, but even in the schools. And I think that's a great foundation. Your mom having exposed you to that at an early age. And I think that's an area of opportunity for many of us these days to share that or expose our kids to money, how it works, why it works, things about interest and savings and why it's so important. So that's a great starting point. So thanks for sharing that with us. Yes. So why do you have such a passion for helping educators as it relates to their financial journey? For me, it's like looking in the mirror. Mm. You know, if when I look in the mirror, I see an educator. And so for me, as I'm looking at our educators, Mm -hmm. I'm looking at myself. Okay. And um, when you look at yourself and you love yourself and you care for yourself, you want what's best for yourself. Sure. Uh, When I left the classroom in 2012, I felt like free enterprise was where I wanted to go. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like it was going to give me the opportunity to make more money, Mm -hmm. but I lost my group benefits. Um, I was starting all over Mm -hmm. in the retirement sector. You know, all of those things. I wish someone had been there to help me and to tell me and to show me and to give me a little more guidance. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons I have such a deep passion for what I get to do every single day is to go back and help someone. Okay. Yeah. I'm still an educator, even though I am with the Horseman Companies. Mm -hmm. I teach part-time at Spelman College. Okay. So I still am a teacher. And my goal is just to pull as many teachers up as Mm -hmm. possible. And I just, I get to do it day by day, educator by educator, school by school, district by district. Making a difference one person at a time, teaching us about money and retirement. That's a great thing to do. Thank you so much. Okay. So, Yarosel, what would you say are the biggest financial challenges faced by educators compared to other professions? And how do these challenges impact their retirement planning? I love this question. Four things come to mind for me. First, I would say low income. Mm -hmm. The second, I would say only having the pension for retirement. Mm. Uh, Third, I'd say student loans. And fourth, I would say classroom expenses. So when I taught public school, um, Just going back to what you just said about your sister, Mm -hmm. I remember my coworkers struggling from month to month. Mm. We we actually made a joke and we called ourselves and believe it or not, someone actually made a song. And I I always say, that's my song. That's my song. (laughs) But we would sing a song when I was teaching. And we would say, it's the middle of the month, loan me $20, mm. loan me $20. <laughs> and, we, and we would sing that song because so many people were struggling just to budget. Mm-hmm. We do a wonderful job. I think many educators love the job. They're not in it for the money. Mm-hmm. But compared to other professionals who are educated the same and mm-hmm. also licensed, it is not the highest income of professions across the board. Yes, it's true. Right? Mm-hmm. And then, and it just doesn't get easier because everything starts to cost more. Inflation. Um, I went to the store and, I mean, I've got a 15-year-old at home and I'm thinking, the budget has drastically changed because of this boy, (laughs) along with the prices of groceries, Mm -hmm. right? So everything goes up. And then I look at the pension. The pension is amazing. We are really fortunate to be one of the few entities that have a true pension, Mm -hmm. But that alone is not enough to comfortably retire the way that many of us want to retire. And so when you're already struggling financially, you can't even see beyond saving any more money. And then I look at student loan debt. That (laughs) is what I feel is like a crisis. The NEA did a study and they said the student loan debt is a financial crisis. I believe it. Yeah, I believe it. Many people do not understand for the educator the ability to make more income. You've got to go and get the advanced degree. Plus, it's in our nature. We're lifelong learners. Yes. We want to be better. We want to grow. How do we do it? We get a master's. We get a specialist. We go get a doctorate. 
That's what we do. We do continuing education. We get more certifications and mm-hmm. add-ons because we're lifelong learners. Right. That's how we stay on top of being masters and being excellent at the job. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that comes along with some student loan debt, sure. right? Yes. And that is plaguing educators. Mm. I love the fact that um, I get to help people with student loan counseling and help guide them through the processes to maneuver with student loans. Yes. And then I think about the fact that I don't know one person in a school building that does not take money out of their own pocket. I just I just don't know anybody who doesn't do it. And when you are in a classroom and you want to have a classroom that is effective, Mm -hmm. a lot of times you do not have all of the resources that are necessary. So it just goes to show the heart of the educator that the commitment that they have to our students. Yes. Because they do it. Yes. They see a book. My students need this book. I have a student. They only speak Spanish. I get Spanish speaking materials for this student, for example. Mm -hmm. Out of pocket classroom expenses is is a huge thing before school starts some educators have spent five hundred dollars before Mm, and mm, that's mm. getting resources from school it's just not enough all the time yeah so those are the four things that come in my mind what i see on a regular basis yeah Yeah. that's one of the many reasons that i i tip my hat to all of our educators because i know it's a tough job a lot of the things that you have to do day to day are not in your job description. And as you said, the heart of the educators Mm -hmm. and the commitment, you have to have a heart for it and you have to be committed to otherwise you, I I don't see how else you could do it. So again, I take my hat off to all of our educators and those who are, who are, like you said, between the walls. Is that what you're saying was within the walls? Between, in the four walls. In the, in the four walls. (laughs) So our hat definitely is tipped uh, for all of you. So now, Why is financial literacy important for educators, both for their personal finances and as tools to empower their students? So the role of the educator, it goes beyond the classroom. The role that the educators play in our communities, it's critical. And so it's critical to um, the, the future of our leaders. It's critical to all professionals. Okay. Right. So you have a big, big shoes when you choose to be an educator. So you have to be at your best mm-hmm. and you have time restraints as an educator. You have a very demanding job. And many times, like like we said earlier, you overlook your own financial well-being mm-hmm. because of the task that's before you. So most educators don't even have a financial professional to call on. Mm. They just don't have it. And you have to learn stewardship. You have to learn strategy when you have a lower income. When uh, I believe Dave Ramsey, they did a study showing that uh, teachers, a study of millionaires uh-huh. and teachers made the, the list. Wow. <laughs> How do you do that? What's the difference between that person that was part of that study and the other person that's here struggling right now mm-hmm. uh, on January the 9th? to try to manage the money for the month, right? right? Mm -hmm. How do you do that? What's the difference? Well, it's through strategy. Mm -hmm. It's through stewardship. It's through discipline. It's helping. Educators are masters of subject content, right? They can talk to you all day about math. You get a math teacher in the room, (laughs) they will go in on that thing, right? (laughs) You get an English teacher talking about English, Mm -hmm. they go to town on talking about literacy and reading right. oh my goodness yeah, right in their wheelhouse oh my as soon as you <laughs> teachers talk we edu speak is what i call it we okay. edu speak we don't stop talking about education like we go home at the dinner table and we're talking about school and oh my goodness we get excited about textbooks which is kind of crazy mm-hmm. but i got a new textbook and i was so excited to l- look at that textbook it's just our jam it's what we do uh-huh. But many times we're not educated on financial matters. Yes. Right. Yes. So they have the unique ability to just break down lessons into digestible pieces. Imagine if they were empowered with financial education, financial literacy, Uh how they could impart that to our students, Mm. which ultimately affects the community, which ultimately affects all the other professions because they already have the gift. They already have the skill. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's important, not just for themselves, but for our students and the fact that we touch every single person on the earth. Wow. Well said. Very well said. 
Well, additionally, as we speak on that subject, why is it crucial for educators to start planning for their retirement early, even with lower starting salaries, as you have already mentioned? So, number one, there's this beautiful thing called compound interest. Yes, it is. (laughs) And compound interest allows you to make money not just off of what you're putting in, but off of the earnings. Mm -hmm. The earlier you start, the better your life is. So people who start early saving and investing because of compound interest, they can stop. Someone who starts later and begins to save and invest, they can put more money in than that person who started early Mm -hmm. and stopped and still not come up higher than that person who started early. Very true. That's because of compound interest. So that's definitely one of the first uh, important um, components about starting early. The other thing is later on, if you are trying to catch up, Mm -hmm. you got to drop more money into your savings. You just got to pull more money away. Mm -hmm. When you start early, you can begin to save with smaller amounts. Right, right. Right? So it's just better for you overall. And then peace of mind. Mm. There's nothing like peace of mind. There's nothing like financial security for later. Um, I know so many people, they just they say they, they want to live their best life. What does that look like for you? How are you going to obtain that peace of mind uh-huh. so you start early? Yeah. 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 Those are three great points right Thank there. You. I, I, I kind of like that, especially the earlier you start, the better. And I got some advice. I, I've mentioned it on our podcast more than once. When I started my first job, I was 14 years old. I was a dishwasher. And I remember I was making $2.45 an hour. I was so happy. And there was a lady who told me, young man. Every check you get, every time you get paid, put something on the side to yes. save. So if it's even, if pay it's no yourself. more than that, pay yourself. <laughs> Ooh, I wish I could go back. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you didn't pay yourself? Uh, not, not as much as I should have. Yeah. I'll just leave it at that. Pay but yourself. Yeah, that's very important. If you take nothing else away from this, pay yourself. I mm-hmm. think it's a great thing to, to keep in mind and to do. Great All tip. Right. Yes, ma'am. Now, moving on. So now that our educators know that it's crucial to start planning earlier, how can they overcome common obstacles to early planning? Just like every Crockett did. I, I just hesitancy, uh, procrastination, whatever it was. But what can they do to overcome these common obstacles to their early planning? So first and foremost, just you don't walk alone. Mm. Right. Okay. And too often when it comes to money, we look at money in our financial situations like it's my personal thing. Right. I don't want anybody in my business. It's my personal thing. Can your students do it on their own? They need you, right? So guess what? You need somebody. Mm -hmm. Leverage a professional. Yes. Leverage a professional. But be mindful of some of these people who are out here, um, you know, to take. Maybe not have your best interest at heart. I would also say take financial literacy classes. And so I know some people are like, oh, my goodness, how do I do that? Well, there are a lot of free classes you can take on Zoom. Um, locally, there are a lot of free classes you can take just to learn some things. Yes. And everyone's not trying to sell you something. Mm-hmm. YouTube, university. Yes. I'm all about nice, free, resourceful places to yes. get information. Yes. YouTube, podcasts like this. Mm-hmm. Instead of listening to the jams on the way home, mm-hmm. put on a podcast, educate yourself. Yes. And I think that is just a good start for us, a simple start, mm-hmm. just to take us to, an, to the next level. Wow, excellent point. And then, you know, that's you said one of my favorite words is free. I mean, there's so yes. much to learn uh, online and it's just free. Like you said, not everyone is trying to sell you something. And, you know, as a myself, by profession, I'm an IT professional. So, you know, the, the, the technology changes seems like daily and there's always something you can grasp out there and, and learn. And one of my sayings is every day you learn something is a good day. Of course, I think kind of. Uh, changed it a little bit. Every day you're here is a good day, but it's especially good when you learn something in process of it. So great point. Online classes, free classes. If you want to learn something, there's stuff out there that'll help you get there. Excellent point. Now, Yarosel, what are some of the common concerns and anxieties that educators might have about retiring comfortably? So when I speak to our educators, the things that I often hear, can I even retire? (laughs) Am I going to die in this classroom? Oh my Lord. Um, when can I retire? That's a question that I hear often. Can I make it to 30 years? Can I stay in the game? Can I do it? Am I going to need to work after I retire? Should I plan to downsize? Oh, good. When I, uh, we got this house, 
what does my future need to look like mm-hmm. when I'm moving into this space? Yeah. And so those are some common anxieties that I hear a lot of educators um they tell me mm-hmm. and my friends and 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 colleagues and I think that they're they're common, they're normal, especially if you start in this profession, say right out of college, uh-huh. you can do 30 years and you're still pretty young. Yeah. Very so true. what does that look like for you? Maybe you didn't purchase your home until a lot later mm-hmm. um, and you still have a mortgage. Yeah. So there are so many. Um, everybody's situation is different, but mm-hmm. I think those are the most common things. I, I totally agree with that. I, I know several people who have retired and even relatives of mine who started careers very early and did 30 years and retired. And they said, I'm just going to do, you know, not much of anything, but I found that to not be the case. Right. Many of them have gone on to, to take on new jobs and other interest things to keep them busy. It's, they still get up early or that hour that they've gotten up all the, the 30 years they were working. It's hard to just do nothing. It is. And so, uh, I, I think somehow I, I'll manage to fill the time appropriately for myself. But as I understand it, to do nothing after retirement is tough. So we have yes. to stay busy. We have to stay committed and take up interest in things uh, to keep us going along the way. So and, great point. And I like to say motion is lotion. You know, yeah. you don't want to just be sitting at home, not mm-hmm. taking care of your physical health. Yeah, yeah. It'll affect everything, your mental health. So. Yeah, motion is lotion. I'm liking that. I'm, I'm, if you hear that again, you, you'll know where you're at. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that one with me. Thank you so much. Well, can you share some practical tips and resources for educators to create realistic budgets and set achievable financial goals for retirement? Sure. One thing I love, I love free. Mm. <laughs> I love free things. Yes. So, um, On my website, I actually have a free Excel budget that you can just download if that's your jam. Okay. And if you are one of those people that you like to write it down, you like the spreadsheets, that is a resource that is available to you. Okay. We're in the digital age. Yes, we are. Mint.com. Mint.com is free. And Mint.com will put things together for you in that app, showing you your budget and where you're spending your money. And Uh sometimes you'll look at that and you just can't believe what you've done. And Mm. (laughs) so Mint.com is is one. Many of our educators are still in school. So they're students. Mm -hmm. So YNAB, you need a budget. That is also free only if you are a student. So if you are a student, take advantage of the fact that you have your student email address and you can use YNAB. Okay. And then every dollar. Every dollar is another free digital based budgeting um, app. Mm -hmm. And there is a version of um, every dollar that you can pay for, but the free version works great. Okay. So those are our tools that will can help you get in order. Well, you also mentioned your website. Would you care to share your website address with us at this point? Yeah, sure. It's I am the multipreneur.com. There you have it. Thank you so very much, ma'am. Now, more and more these days, we see comparisons of the Gen X, Gen Y and Gen Z generations. Based on your experiences with educators in different generations, what have you observed in the planning habits of, say, Gen Xers versus millennials? I love this. Um, You can really learn a lot from both generations. Okay. Okay. so the millennials. The millennials love experiences. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, that group, they are going to go after an experience. They will change a job and they are not afraid to do so. Yes. And yes. they'll go to the money. You know, when we were growing up, you worked your job, you did your job, you were committed and loyal to your job. Mm-hmm. Those millennials are going to go after the money. They like experiences and self-fulfillment. Yes. Right? So we can learn from the millennials in that way. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, millennials are actually starting to do better about saving for their money. Okay. Now, the Gen Xers, we like customer service. They're resourceful, very independent. They're hard workers. And they're open to technology because it's that first uh, group that went from the analog age to the digital. Uh So they're open to learning new things. Okay. And... When it comes to the planning habits, the millennials, they more than likely it's it's difficult to tell a millennial, you know, cut your expenses and that's how you're going to save money. Mm-hmm. Um, 
don't go to Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And that's going to change your life, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can't, that doesn't work on the millennials. Right, right. <laughs> on the millennials. But the Gen Xers, they are, they're more open to trying some new things. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the good things that we can learn from each other is sometimes we can learn to go for it. Yeah. And try to do something uh, that's going to improve your life. Do something new. You know, I'm going to download mint.com. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm going to do a budget. Yeah. Yeah. And the millennials can really learn from the Gen Xers that, you know, I can be a little bit more independent and I can be more resourceful. Mm -hmm. Let me look at ways to be more resourceful. Not that I'm wanting to cut myself. I can still do, do things that make me happy. Right. right? Uh -huh. But I can learn to be more resourceful and not just take life just based off of how I feel. Right. So I think we have a lot that we can learn from from both generations. You just described some of my very close relatives to a T. So <laughs> your research is on point. I'll Thank just say you. that. Now, Yarisel, this next question is one that I can truly relate to. And you mentioned something about student loans earlier. But mm -hmm. I remember the first time that I took out and received a student loan. At the time, I was relieved because it allowed me to continue my educational pursuits. We know that student loans can be beneficial, but they can also be burdensome on a budget. What strategies can people use to manage debt effectively and prioritize their retirement savings? Get out of debt quickly. <laughs> That's the first one. Yes, indeed. You get out of debt quickly, you attack it, but you have to use the strategy that works best for you. And so you have to be able to take a look at, okay, what is out there and what can I do to help myself, mm -hmm. right? So I'm going to give you... Uh, two ways, two debt strategies that you can look at. Okay. So one is the snowball method. And what that method does is you pay the smallest debt as fast as possible. Pay the minimums on everything else. Okay. And then pay that extra toward the next largest debt. Yes. So it's a quick win. When you have a quick win, it boosts your confidence. Yeah. Like, even yeah. though it was a $100 bill, I paid it off. Yay, mm -hmm. you know, that type of thing. And it just really is a confidence booster. Okay. So that's called the snowball. Okay. And then there's something called the debt avalanche. <laughs> what that means is you have to take your, your debts. This is going to require you to get real and really write everything down and find out how much interest you're paying on those debts. Uh -huh. Many people, they don't even know what, they, they haven't written down all the debts. Mm -hmm. Get out that piece of paper, write it down. I know you don't want to call the company because you're behind. <laughs> call them. Find yes. out what that interest payment was. All those, uh, the mail sitting on the table that you haven't opened. Yeah. Open that bill. Open that bill today, mm -hmm. right? So you're going to pay the largest or highest interest debt as fast as possible and then pay the minimums on the other. And then you pay the extra toward the next smallest debt. So paying off that big debt just... For a lot of people, they feel like they're in a lot of control and mm -hmm. they're just getting because they don't want to have to pay more later because of the interest. Yes. Um, so those are two ways. Something else that I will say, many educators, they feel like, man, I just don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. All of the greats, everyone who, who has done immaculate and exceptional things mm -hmm. had the same 24 hours that you <laughs> had. So true. Right. So true. So I believe that you can find extra income and you can earn it you can tutor which many people do publish an ebook mm -hmm. some people can sit what do you what can you talk about easily what is it that you're teaching people on a regular basis what is it that you know write the book yeah. write the ebook you can do that a lot of people it's nothing for them to write mm -hmm. they breeze through graduate school because they just they're strong writers uh -huh. write the ebook make the money real estate is a really good side job that people can do um, while they're while they're teaching, sell lessons on teachers, pay teachers. There are so many different ways that you can bring in some extra income. Mm -hmm. Time is not the problem. Right. Right. It's our mindset. And so once you make up your mind that you're going to get out of debt as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. it's a freedom wow. um, that you've never felt. It's 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 that peace of mind. So and it's yours. You yeah. can do it. And yeah. I, I just I love I love it when people say you I'm out of debt. 
Mm-hmm. And it, it just uh, it makes me happy. Feels like a weight off the shoulder. Absolutely. I, I, can, I mean, literally, it feels like a weight off the shoulder. And and you're right. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. What yeah. we're going to do with them is the question. Exactly. And so uh, I, I have a saying and we have a saying in our household, the things we want to do, we'll find a way to do them. Mm-hmm. We will always find a way to do the things we want to do. So if it's extra income you want to make, you'll find something to do it. Yeah. And that may mean you got to cut out that show. Yeah, maybe. You got to you can't watch four hours of TV. Mm hmm. You know. They have to cut it to two or one gotta or none. Got to cut it. To, cut it. Yeah. yeah. What's the what's the priority is, is the question exactly. you have to ask yourself. So great information right there. So is it important for educators to have multiple streams of income? And in the words of one of our great guests in the past, I teed that one right up for you. I know. You. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you that. That's my passion. Multiple streams of income. Mm-hmm. Yes. In every language. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. In every language. Teachers are disciplined. They're creative. Um, They need the extra income. There's so many opportunities for passive income. You need to increase your financial security. And I believe that we all have the gifts within us to be to do multiple things. Yes. Yeah. And it gives you stability. It helps you if you get into trouble. Mm. And I stand on that. Yeah. I stand on that. And, you know, I mean, that's all I can say about that. You, You need to have more than one stream of income coming in. Yeah, that applies to so many avenues of of life in general. And and when I think about that saying, multiple streams, that goes to maybe even for those who invest. You know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Absolutely. The way my grandma and great-grandma used to say it, multiple streams. Diversity is the key. Yes, it is. Yeah, diversity is the key. There's there's strength in diversity, stability in diversity. Mm -hmm. Um, It's what will hold you up when you're dealing with rocky times yeah. and unstable times when you have the diversity. Yeah. Some may be doing well at this point. Some may not. But right. in the long run, yeah. we'll be better off in the end. So yeah. that's that's that one of the reasons why mutual funds work well. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. they're diverse investments. There we go. So in preparation for today's interview, I took a look at your financial journal. Mm-hmm. Could you give some highlights of the From Red to Black Weekly Financial Journal and how it can resonate with our educators? So... That was a labor of love, man. <laughs> I I did not plan to do that. Oh. It was really dropped in my spirit. I love lists. I love to be organized. Mm-hmm. And um and so naturally I'm gonna write. I know a lot of people, they'll grab the iPad. I'm gonna grab the notebook, right? I see. So that's my natural jam. And then for me, I'm huge on personal development. I gravitate more toward a book on how I'm going to be better than reading for leisure. Mm -hmm. And I am learning to read for leisure, though. Uh, Give myself a break. There you go. Important. (laughs) But I believe that when you write something down, you're going to remember it better. Sure. And one of the things that I know about educators, we're everything. We're masters of content. Mm -hmm. We're counselors. We're mom and dad. Yes, very true. Grandma and granddaddy, auntie and uncle Mm -hmm. at school. We are so many things to our students. And one of the things that I I love about the journal is that it's going to help you with your spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. It helps with mental transformation. It helps to drive your ambitions and your purpose. It helps to push you to your destiny. I know that um, when I left college... So, you know, the journey, you go from elementary to middle Mm -hmm. to high school, possibly to college. With educators, we go right back into a school, right? Mm -hmm. And we're masters of our particular content, science, math, English, social studies, Spanish, whatever it is that we're doing, business education. Uh But no one really teaches us how to do money. Very true. And so we pick up things along the way. Some of us get paid monthly. Some of us get paid twice a month. We kind of learn as we go, right? We almost become students again when it comes to our finances, but there's no teacher. Right. So we have to figure it out on our own. And we're self-taught in a lot of things. And so many of those things, it's trial and it's error. Yes. And a lot of error for a lot of us Mm -hmm. when you look at statistics, right? Yeah. So what I love about the journal is it breaks things down into what I call digestible pieces. Mm -hmm. You take everything from a week-to-week base, 
no matter how you get paid. Okay. And you're able to take a, a look because sometimes all you can handle is what's happening in the week. This is true. If you think, <laughs> if you go beyond, sometimes if you go beyond the day, you mm-hmm. get overwhelmed. So I wanted it to be a place to where you could really self-reflect and just grow individually hmm, okay. and and just become a better you on the financial side at the end of the day. That's a good thing. I, I'm i glad you said that. It, it makes me think of my sister. I know we sometimes talk about the fact because our pay cycles vary. Yes. She's one of those people who gets paid once a month. I said, well, it's just the same. Just divide it by four. What? She said, no, it's, it's not just that easy. And so when you when you mentioned that, I said, maybe this would be a good thing for me to give to her as a oh, gift. Oh, yeah. And maybe help me to understand a little bit better her point of view on it. But to me, I'm thinking it's pretty much the same thing. She said, oh, no, no, it's so much not the same thing. So yes, glad yes. you brought that up. Speaking our language over here. <laughs> now, Yarosel, could you discuss the different retirement savings vehicles available to educators such as 403Bs, IRAs, and annuities? Sure. So, um, you know, in a nutshell, the 403B is like the 401K mm-hmm. um, for educators, the 403B is. And many districts are matching. So you have an advantage of getting free money in addition to your free money. Um, and you have to know that it's a tax advantage program, meaning that it lowers the amount of money that you're taxed on when you're contributing into the 403B. Okay. Right. So let's say I make $10,000 and I have $3,000 going into my 403B. Mm-hmm. Well, now I'm only taxed on 7000 Yes. That's how that works. Big plus. So it's definitely a, a, a great supplement to the pension that we already are receiving, okay. right? Mm-hmm. And then there are the IRAs, the individual retirement accounts. Um, there are many different IRAs. And the beauty of the IRAs, you can have this in addition to your 403B. Uh-huh. And if you qualify, um, you can have a Roth IRA mm-hmm. or you can have um, a traditional um, IRA. Those are two options. Even though I will say this, if you... Make an in if in it when I say qualify, it's based on income, okay. right? Mm-hmm. So go do your research, find out what the income limits are for 20, uh, 24. Okay, whether you are single, whether you are married, it will it will vary, right? Mm-hmm. But one of the cool things about the traditional IRA when you're putting money into this type of retirement account is you have the opportunity to do what's called like a backdoor Roth IRA, mm. so you can contribute to the traditional IRA Uh and you can roll it over into a Roth IRA. Oh, So again, don't walk alone. Get with a financial professional. They can help you to do that. The beauty of the individual retirement accounts is the tax advantages. With a Roth IRA, these are retirement accounts so you don't use them as a savings account. They got rules, right? You Mm got to keep your money in there. Right. With the Roth, five years, Mm -hmm. right? You got to keep your money in there and there are some um, opportunities to get money from it Uh without paying penalties or taxes when you're buying a house for the first time or for educational yes. expenses, for example. But the money is designed to stay, right? So you, when you put this money in there, you don't want to be thinking about, I got to go back in there and get it. It's money that is going to stay. Mm-hmm. Roth IRAs, you put money into these accounts with your after-tax dollars. So you've already paid the taxes. Mm -hmm. So say the money is coming out of your checking account, for example. You've already paid the taxes on it. Mm -hmm. So then that account grows tax-free, and later on, you get to pull it tax-free. So that's one of the beautiful things about um, about the the Roth IRA. Traditional IRA is a little different in that you get your your tax benefit now. So again, same example, you got $10,000 you earned, you put in three thousand in your traditional IRA. You're mm-hmm. only taxed on the seven thousand. But later, when you take the money, you mm-hmm. are taxed at ordinary income. Mm. Um, and annuities, you know, annuities are also great retirement um, opportunities. Okay. There are different types of annuities. There, well, there are all kinds, but more most common fixed annuities, mm-hmm. variable annuities. Variable annuities are tied to the market. Okay. Um, and fixed annuities is basically like a fixed. Uh, amount um, we 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 like to call it the power of, of especially with the fixed index annuity, uh-huh. the power of zero. Um, you may if if the market does well, you make may make a little extra money. But if the market drops, you're basically 
uh, not going to lose. Okay. Right. So you gain a little money, a little bit on top. And then when it's time for annuities are great when you know that later on you're going to need extra income. Okay. So you can use your annuity to be a supplement to the retirement. Okay. Everybody's situation is different. Yes. yes. Right. So am I going to need this money later? Am I Am I going to, I'm, I know that when we retire, we're moving here. We need mm. this. Am I going to work after I retire? Mm. So you have to sit down, plan, ask yourself all the questions that match you. Yes. Right. Yes. Nothing is cookie cutter when it comes to retirement. Mm-hmm. Right. So everybody's retirement situation looks different. Some people are going to be in Santorini in Greece. And some wish. people they want to be <laughs> right. And some people they want to be um, they're They're moving in with their kids to wa- watch the grandchildren. Mm, OK. Everybody has. It looks different. And so the re- the retirement vehicle that you use, you pick what Matt works best for you, your family. The only way that you can really maximize and take advantage of tax advantages and all of those things to fully understand what each of these do. Mm-hmm. Don't just jump right into something right. because it sounds cool or you saw a TikTok on it mm-hmm. um, or a little clip on Facebook. Right. <laughs> you know, right. Really dive into all of the different opportunities for you. Mm-hmm. Um, some people are self-employed and have no clue that they have access to a SEP IRA. That is an IRA that is a retirement vehicle when you're self-employed, but it gives you the ability to contribute like much more money than a regular traditional Roth IRA. Okay. So you have opportunities. We have a lot of opportunities with retirement. Awesome. Well, so it's not one size fits all. Definitely. Whatever works for my my friend may not necessarily be the best vehicle for me. Correct. Do your research. Make the best decision for the way you want your retirement yes. to look when you retire. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Now, for those that may be starting their investment journey later in life, as you mentioned earlier, Mm -hmm. could you touch on catch up contributions and other strategies? Yes. First and foremost, fully fund your retirement account um, with your employer. Okay. Once you get especially if you've worked in a school district for 15 years and you've been put into your 403B, Mm -hmm. you have the opportunity to give a little more into that account. Yes. So. Take advantage of that opportunity. Yes. Right. And many people just they just didn't know that. All right. Mm. 15 years. You can put more money into that. So take advantage of your uh, employer retirement accounts. Contribute to a Roth IRA. Leverage all of your deductions and use somebody to help you use a professional to help you. I am not one of those people. I'm not a fan of not enjoying yourself Mm -hmm. um, because I do believe that we have to take some time and enjoy ourselves. Sure we do. But we have to budget. Yes. Yes, we do. You have to tell your money where you want it to go. Mm. You got to cut unnecessary spending when you are trying to catch up on contributions, Mm -hmm. Um, especially after you hit age 50 and above. Look at all of the ways and the strategies and places that you can contribute more money. Okay. So sometimes if you're already living a particular way and you're like, Yarsel, I do not have the extra money to put and catch up Mm -hmm. and put the extra money in. Uh Well, then we got to go back to our budget. We got to cut our expenses. We got to figure out another way to look at the money and rework it. Mm. It's all about strategy. Yes, 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 and yes. Now, as we wrap up today, RSL, what are some key takeaways that you'd like to leave with our audience today? So I would say, number one, start early with saving. Yes. Right. Number two, I'm going to say get out of debt. I'm really fortunate. And, and, you know, I stand here as one of you. Mm -hmm. Um, Other than my student loans, Mm -hmm. I'll be able to say, like, next month, I'll be debt free. Wow. Right. Congratulations. <laughs> but it has been a work in progress yes. and it has been a labor and it has been a struggle. And so um, I would say just be committed to it and stay the course. And yes. even with me, you know, Yarasel, the multipreneur who has multiple streams of income and a book and all of this financial knowledge, mm-hmm. even me, I still had to do the same basic things. There's yes. no magic formula. It's just the same basic things. But you can get to the finish line. I wish I had started earlier. Yes, I do. Right? (laughs) Like everyone else. So I'm here to tell somebody, hey, you start early. 
So start early with your savings. Mm -hmm. Get out of that debt. Mm -hmm. Leverage help with the student loan debt. It is overwhelming. It is frustrating. It is confusing. Leverage help with your student loan debt. Don't be afraid to call and get the help with the student loan debt. Do something about it. Okay. Create the budget and just stick to it. It can be difficult, but you can get creative and find ways to entertain yourself and to have a good time and still do the things. And if you're a millennial, still have your experiences (laughs) and all of those fun things that you really want to do. You'd be surprised how Groupon will change your life. Wow. Yes. Real yeah. familiar with that. I you am. know, some people, they, they, you can't be too bougie for, group, <laughs> for Groupon, right? Right. You'd be surprised if you just go and you want to take a little vacation, get a vacation package instead mm-hmm. of just <clears throat> going and just spending money um, just frivolously, yeah. right? Strategize. Budget. You can budget for anything. You can budget for a vacation. Yes, you can. You can budget to get all of the things that you want to get. You just have to strategize and be disciplined with it. Wow. Very, very true. Because I know I, I'm speaking for myself here only, I'm sure. I must budget if I'm planning on taking a vacation that will be as memorable as I'd like for it to be. Yes. So. Now, one last thing. How can people find you online and via social media? Okay. So I'm actually on all the social platforms. Okay. Yeah. You can pretty much find me. By my name, Yara Sel Colbert. Mm-hmm. Um, I am the multipreneur.com is my website, but I am I am the multipreneur on all of the social platforms. Okay. So reach out. Um, I'd love to meet everybody on social media yes. and hopefully get a chance to see some of you at your schools. I'm pretty yeah. sure you will. I'm pretty sure you will. Now, there you have it, folks. Powerful information from Yara Zell Colbert. Agency consultant with the Horace Mann Companies. Yarzel, on behalf of the podcast team and our membership and listenership, thank you very much for stopping by today. Our studio is always open to you, and you're always welcome to come back and share with us. Thank you. Yes, yes. Members and friends, we do what we do for you. So thank you also for your time and attention for tuning in today. We invite you to share our podcast with your family and your friends. And if you have questions, comments or feedback that you'd like to share with us, you can reach us at podcast at TRSGA dot com. That's P.O.D. C-A-S-T at T-R-S-G-A dot com. I'm Everett Crockett. Join us next time for TRS, your retirement in focus.